So what is this new warning about? Yeah, there's something fishy going on with AFib in this country. There's a lot of proposed causes, but uh, one of the risks is association of EPA or omega-3s. Today in our clinical series, we're going to be covering a new risk that's been associated with omega-3s. A lot of people like to take omega-3 supplements, I think maybe even a quarter of the population in the United States may be taking an omega-3 or fish oil supplement. So what is this new warning about? Yeah, there's something fishy going on with AFib in this country. There's a lot of proposed causes, but uh, one of the risks is association of EPA or omega-3s with uh, atrial fibrillation. And for people who don't know, um, atrial fibrillation, it may feel like a fish is sort of flopping around in your chest, but what is AFib if someone doesn't know? Yeah, so AFib is a, uh, a rhythm or the start of a beat that is not congruent with the rest of your heart. So you can think of the heart as, well, four chambers, but two main areas. The atrium are on top, and then the ventricles are on the bottom. You have the right side, pumps to your lungs. You have the left side, pumps to your body. And AFib usually comes from a small area in the very top of the right atrium, actually usually in the pulmonic vasculature, like right, uh, technically not even in the atrium. That's where you might have heard of, uh, you know, someone got their AFib zapped or corrected. Mm. Um, that's just where they find where that uh, abnormal beat is coming from. Is coming from. Yep. Yeah. And zap it. Um, but anyway, AFib in general is one of the most common arrhythmias. We've talked about it before on podcasts, as it is a risk in at least high risk individuals that are on TRT. Yeah, that was that came out of a wasn't the primary endpoint, but did come out of the yep. recent New England Journal of Medicine paper. So this was a pharmacovigilance risk assessment committee. Uh, this is something that happens in Europe. I'm sure we do the same thing on a periodic basis here in the United States. Um, and this is part of the European Medicines Agency. And they just met, this was about, what, six weeks ago at the time that we're recording this. Yep. And uh, they met for three days, September 25th through 28th, and decided to add a warning label to uh, not just the Vasipa, which is a pure EPA product, but also to omega-3 ethyl ester containing products. So this would be your generic Lavaza and even very similar, in some cases identical to what you're getting over the counter. Yeah, so immediately after this came out, I, of course, cut out all EPA, DHA, DPA, Even all omega-3s, yeah, including fish in my <laughs> diet. But wait, it's an essential fatty acid. How can this be a risk? Yeah, it's it's a bit counterintuitive because when you look at some of the preclinical data, there's, you know, association between fatty acids uh, like EPA and DHA, and it seems like these are antiarrhythmic. But then when you look at high-risk populations, they seem to be very pro-arrhythmic. And to complicate things even further, there's a sort of um, observational study that looked at the populations and their actual biomarkers, so not just reported intake of, hey, I eat this much fish or I take this much omega-3, um, but basically just dietary um, assessments. And then they sort of fact check that with, okay, how much is in the adipose, how much is in the serum? how much is in the red blood cell membrane. Mm -hmm. And they found if you slice it between the lowest 20th percentile and the highest 20th percentile, so 80th percentile of omega-3, yep. and they stratified it by DPA, DHA, and EPA, all three showed a protective effect with DHA being um, the most potent, you know, twice as effective, if we'll call it that, uh, in terms of EPA or associated with a 13% reduced incidence of AFib. So that's confusing. That's the opposite of what they said. So at one, the this agency tells me that omegas cause AFib, and then this other study says they don't cause AFib. Uh, perhaps the dose or the content of omegas in their diet was different between those The two dose groups. makes the poison. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is one of my favorite sayings. Uh, and that does turn out to be the case. It's interesting because these were kind of stacked closely together. Uh, basically, this paper was not trying to say that omega-3 supplements were not risky. It was just reinforcing the dietary guidelines saying, hey, it's probably a good idea for people to have, I think the recommendation is three, two or three meals of fish per week. And basically saying, hey, yes, with that level of omega-3 intake, looks like it would correlate with a reduced mm -hmm. incidence of this AFib. 
And the average daily intake in these populations is around a half a gram, just under. So about 430 milligrams per day. Yeah. And uh, in addition to that, consider the average health or the average phenotype of someone with a bottom 20th percentile omega-3 content. Um, they probably don't have a very healthy diet otherwise. So they're, yeah. they're going to be, again, it's, this is a correlation with low uh, omega content, omega-3 content and AFib risk. Yeah, it's like the, the healthy user bias or the healthy individual bias where people that tend to have a higher omega-3 index are probably doing other positive things for mm -hmm. their health. And I believe some disease states will also deplete omega-3 in the body. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's a lot to unpack there, but um, as we'll talk about, it kind of does line up at least directionally somewhat with some of the other data that's out there. Mm -hmm.